Welcome listeners, my name is Les Thomas from unpaved.com.au and today I'll be talking to Sam Outlaw about his October 2015 Australian tour which includes out on the weekend festivals in Melbourne and Sydney and I spoke to him about working with Rai Kuda as producer on his debut album as well as what led him to country music and creating country music in the city of Los Angeles. Good morning, Sam Outlaw. It's Les Thomas from Unpaved here. How are you going there? Hey, Thomas. I'm good, man. How are you? Very well, thank you. Um, Thanks for having a chat to us today. We're really looking forward to uh, the tour, which is coming up very soon. You're you're playing Uh at the Minion Town Hall on Friday the 16th of October, the Northgate Social Club on Sunday the 18th of October, and we've got shows in uh, Adelaide, Sydney and of course the Out on the Weekend Festival in Melbourne and Sydney, which will be amazing. Yeah. And um, this will be Yeah, I'm really I'm so excited. This will be the second uh, visit to Australia in less than a year. So um what's been happening uh, in that sort of interim period? Can you sort of fill us in on on what you've been up to recently? Sure. I mean, I, I kind of feel like I've lived, like, three lifetimes since I was out there last. Um, so, let's see, when I when I was in Australia in April, I just quit my job and, and started doing music full-time. Yep. So, I got back uh, from doing that tour with Justin Townsend and uh, officially released the record in the United States in the beginning of June. Yep. And then, uh, before that and after that, I pretty much just been touring full-time. I did some shows with... Uh, Dwight Yoakam and, and shows with Clint Black and one of my other favorite country bands, is Sleep at the Wheel. Um, I got to tour with a great band called Dawes. Yeah, wow. Um, I got to, uh, yeah, that was great. Um, I played some kind of festival things and played some stuff in Nashville. We went to Americana Fest uh, in Nashville. Yeah. Wow. Um, I guess that was a couple weeks ago now. And uh, so, yeah, I, I pretty much just been uh, playing, playing music full time. I actually got to open for these um Texas guys, Wade Bowen and Randy Rogers, they made a record together and we did some shows. Fantastic. So uh, I've been I've just been touring my touring my guts out is the simplest way to put it. Well that's um that's that sounds like a great way to do it. And your album I, I've been uh giving a really good listen to and it's a really stunning country album, produced of course with help from uh, none other than Rye Cuda. Um so yeah. You know, I, I didn't want to sort of get get right into that straight away, but I wanted to ask, um, I understand that you were born in South Dakota, but you've lived in Southern California from a very young age, around 10. Uh, can you sort of give us a, a sense of how you sort of fell in love with country music and decided that this was uh, your thing? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I mean, that's, that's right. So I was born in the Midwest but mostly grew up in Southern California. I was really lucky that my my dad was a huge fan of, of one of the bands I, I just mentioned called The Sleep of the Wheel, which mm-hmm. they were kind of coming on the scene in the 70s, you know, the Western Swing Revivalist thing, and, and at some point they were based out of Austin. But he somehow, I don't know how, I think he discovered them maybe when he was going to school out in Phoenix, Arizona. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sorry, in Seattle, Washington. Um, I think that's where he first heard their music. Um, Mm. Anyway, so I grew up listening to the Sleep of the Wheel. That was really the only country music we listened to. Um, that was like every road trip and you know, family vacation and holiday was, was listening to the Sleep of the Wheel. Mm. Um, but I didn't really listen to country music, you know. It was more like a, the, the typical stuff that makes you fall in love with music, I guess, like the Beatles and the Everly Brothers and the Beach Boys and whatnot. Yeah. And then um, when I was in my early 20s, I just kind of stumbled upon um, some live performances of George Jones and Emily Harris. Mm. So that was the first time I, like, really heard, you know, quote-unquote, real country music and um, just fell in love with it completely. So I think I think the wheel kind of set the um, set the soil right for me to then fall in love with it. Um, and that, that was just it for me. When I heard George Jones for the first time, I went out and bought his music and uh, never looked back. Fantastic. And it, it seems uh, just from looking at the, the path that you've taken, you, you're really not the kind of person who's afraid to, to, to literally uh, lay down your own road. I mean, you're, you're um, doing it from 
uh, Los Angeles, not really regarded as the home of yeah. uh, country music. And um, I understand that, you know, there is, thanks largely to your work, a, uh, you know, th there are real shows happening in that town. Um, can you sort of uh, fill us in on how that sort of evolved and, you know, like where you started yeah. from and where it is now, I yeah. guess? I first, you know, when I, when I first started playing out, you know, as Sam Outlaw and actually trying to have a band and stuff, that was in 2009. Mm. And at the time, I lived in Long Beach, which is just, you know, it's a city just south of L.A. So it's part of Los Angeles County. Yeah. But it's, um, it's about an hour south of Los Angeles. And, um, you know, it was like, back then it was like, I, I remember like, thought it was so cool that I had like a pedal steel player and thought it was kind of probably really weird that I was wearing a cowboy hat. Yeah. Um, and, you know, but there, there was, even back then, there was this kind of like, there, there were bands that were doing, I guess more like the folk group thing. Like, you, you saw a lot of bands with like banjo yep. and mandolin and stuff, but not really a lot of bands doing straight ahead country music. Yes. Um, I mean, and that's not to say that they they weren't out there, they just maybe it wasn't quite as visible. Mm. And, um, yeah, I would definitely say over the last few years, I've, I've seen, I've seen a nice, um, build in in just bands that are playing country music and people kind of diving into not just the music but also the culture. Like I feel like you see more steps and kind of roaming around Los Angeles now. So yeah. um, there's there's definitely there's always been a scene um, for country music in Los Angeles. And I, I don't know that it'll ever be like as big as it was, you know, back in the '60s and '70s or even '80s when you had like the urban cowboy thing happen. Yes. Um, so I don't think any of us are really holding our breath for this to go mainstream, so to speak. Mm. Um, but there, there's certainly um, there's certainly still a lot of country fans in Los Angeles and yeah. um, in the Valley. And uh, you know, we, we play our hearts on. I think the, the deal is like I tell people, even if there's not a like a honky tonk bar to play in in LA, mm. we kind of just whatever show we play, we just convert that bar to a honky tonk tonight and just kind of imagine. Yep. We kind of fantasize that that is our honky talk, and then we, we kind of try to bring everyone into that fantasy for the night. Yep, great stuff. And you um, sort of quit your, uh, as I understand it, quite lucrative and, and stable career uh, selling advertising uh, to do country music, which isn't really the move one would um, suspect of somebody who's in it for the money. But, you know, um, can you yeah, talk about right. that, that right. sort of leap uh, that you took and uh, and so on? Well, I mean, it's still, I mean, it's, I, I don't know that a day goes by where I don't have kind of fears and self-doubt. and Not necessarily thinking, oh, maybe I should have kept my day job or something. But, you know, it, it is really gnarly to go from mm. having, uh, you know, like you said, a stable job. And, and, and I was... I was making more money than anybody else that I was friends with, really. So, it was like, it was a good job. Yeah. It was fairly flexible. And in some ways, I think because the job was, there was good money, but also there was a, a fair amount of flexibility to kind of work from home and fit my own schedule. Yeah. I think in some ways, the job kind of kept me, like, playing music enough that it could be a hobby, yeah. but also really kept me from diving into it full on. Mm. So, um, because in some, like, a lot of people, it's like, you know, they were, maybe they go from working as like a coffee barista or like flipping burgers, you know, so they're working in some shitty job mm. um, that they don't really like anyway. And then they switch from that to music because it's like, well, mm -hmm. I can just be poor doing music, so why not? Mm. But I think it was tough for me to give that up a little bit. But the truth is, you know, once I realized I, I really was just selling advertising for the money and, and, mm. and I, I did want something more fulfilling, I wanted to. I guess I wanted to also see if I could do it. And I, I, I'm not saying that I've even proven that to myself yet, but um, God knows every day I wake up and I try, and I think, you know, when I play shows, I think, all right, man, like, do your best. This is what you've not chosen to do. Mm -hmm. And especially, um, you know, like what can happen where, you know, you'll be on the road for a while, you get cranky, you get upset, and mm -hmm. it can be easy to kind of get an attitude or to get a chip on your shoulder about playing music. Mm -hmm. and, um, and um, I think I think in those on those days, especially, I have to remind myself, like, look, man, you gave up that of life to do this, so be thankful for what you're doing. And even if it's not like a huge money making venture right now, you gotta you gotta be thankful that you're gonna do this every day. Yes. So um, it's kind of something I have to remind myself. Um, and yeah, it can be it can be frustrating and tough, and it's certainly not it's not <laughs> not as easy as a 
you know, every two weeks getting that sweet paycheck deposited yeah. in your checking account. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I think it's a, you know, it's a great move for us music lovers. So, um, you know, I, I think it's very bold and, and, and proper, really. And it sounds like your mother um, played a very large part in nurturing uh, your artistic side. Is that right? You've, you've adopted her maiden name. And, um, you know, can you maybe talk about yeah, her you influence? Know, it, I, yeah, of course. You know, I think, I think when I first started playing out and using the outlaw name, it was more like, uh, on a superficial level, obviously, just kind of the catchiness of the name, mm. and and maybe even just the um, you know the, the kind of country aspect of the outlaw association. But yeah, you know, my mom passed away a couple of years ago now, and I think at that point, it definitely kind of it turned into something more significant and serious for me. Getting uh, getting a chance to well, in, in, like for instance, in interviews like this, like, it gives me a chance to talk about my mom. Yeah. It gives me a chance to kind of remember her every night when I. I have a song called Ghost Town, which is kind of in many ways a, a song about, uh, it uses, a, you know, the metaphor of a, a, a town that's now been kind of, that used to be something that's now been kind of deserted and abandoned. Yes. Um, it, it's just kind of a simple metaphor for some things that happened in my family and ultimately the death of my mother. Mm. So um, I, as much as it's technically still a stage name, you know, my, my given name, um, last name is Morgan, and that's mm. still my legal name, but... I think it's kind of become more than simply a stage name at this point. And um, again, it's it's something that not only helps me maybe in some ways keep some sort of weird separation between my music life, quote unquote, and my personal life. Yeah. Um, but like again, it also gives me a chance to really think about my family. Yeah. And and I guess um, in some ways the name has turned into kind of a fitting fitting name anyway since you know doing doing this country music came from LA can feel a little crazy at times. Sure. Um, and a little stupid. <laughs> but uh, certainly certainly not like not not the expected route. So um, I guess it means a lot of different stuff at this point. Yeah. Also, I mean back in uh, the times of old England they had very literal naming conventions, so it would suggest that there is indeed uh, an outlaw heritage. Yeah, that's right. And and actually, the I know in my case, um, my outlaw family comes from Scotland. I want to say so. The the outlaws used to be the McGregor clan mm. in Scotland, and the, the king uh, booted them out of Scotland and deemed them outlaws. Wow! So for whatever reason, the name stuck. Yeah. And uh, that's that's where outlaw comes from. It was really it was a real name that was attached to them by the, the king of Scotland. Fantastic. That's a great story. I mean, yeah. And coming to Australia, you'll be surrounded by the descendants of outlaws as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, maybe, that, maybe that's why Australians connect with this music so much. Because, uh, you know, I was up there last time and it really was a treat yeah. to get to play for audiences that were kind of really just love country music Absolutely. and were passionate about it and, and were excited about it. So it's a good place to be. Definitely. And, um, can you sort of also give us uh, an idea of what it was like to um, share uh, creating this debut album with a legend uh, like Rai Kuda? And uh, I'm not sure if he changed the sound or, or maybe if you can talk about what he brought to it that maybe you, yeah. you didn't quite imagine until it happened. Well, there's so much there. First of all, it was incredible to make a record um, with Rai Kuda. Um, I feel, I feel like even now, even though I've been doing this now for, I mean, really only half a year, I still feel like, God, I can't believe it. I, I don't deserve this in a way, you know? Mm. Um, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you, he brought, uh, he brought a few really crucial things. First of all, he brought his guitar work. Um, yeah. On all those tracks and every song, you can hear him playing guitar, um, and you hear his son, Joaquin Cooter, on the drum kit. So the two of them, you know, with my band in the room making the record together, 90% of what you hear on those tracks is what we, what, what, what we as a band track together, you know, during basic tracking in the first three days. Cool, yeah. Um, so, so simply, you know, his, his guitar work is, is completely uh, distinct from anything else you could have uh, got from a different guitar player. Um, and then also, in the, he also brought experience. You know, as much as I felt confident about my songs, and I didn't, you know, I wasn't looking at him to help me necessarily with arrangements or 
you know, really writing the songs, and, and he was looking to do that. Um, he really brought a lot of experience, and he would help us understand when we had a good take or when we needed to go back and do it again, or if the, if the vibe was right, if the groove was right. So he brought experience, which is something that you, you can't, no matter how good you are, you just can't have experience until you've had it, right? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, that experience, was a, that was a big deal. And then, I mean, just certain um, production uh, contributions, like knowing who to call for the mariachi band, mm. knowing who to bring in for, um, you know, some of the background vocals. Um, uh, you know, he, 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 he was able to make certain uh, calls there which, you know, he was bringing people where otherwise I wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it was a lot of that stuff. But, but really, I mean, it's just him as a musician. I mean, I felt, I felt he really brought um, some sweet style and some sweet sounds to those songs. Oh, yeah. But, again, there's just no way that we would have achieved that sound if it wasn't for him playing on those songs. Yeah, well, congratulations. It's an absolutely stunning uh, debut album that, yeah, I heartily recommend to every fan of country music, really. And it really creates that sense of location, you know, the whole, um, yeah, Southern California, uh, Baja and whatnot. I got, it just puts you there, which is beautiful. And we can't wait to um, see you very soon, uh, Sam. So thank you again for your time today. It's been a pleasure. And um, we'll really look forward to seeing you down here in Melbourne. Well, thank you, Ross. Thanks so much for the kind words and the encouragement. And I, I can't wait to be there. So I'll see you all soon. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot. All the best. Take care. Bye. I know it in the evening when the sun goes down. And when the moon rises, there's something inside that says, I'm gonna love her for a while Yeah, I'm gonna love her for